Freelance is the way most people play Salmon Run, and funnily enough, it's also the hardest way to play the mode. The game puts you into a round with three random people, and with the only ways to communicate being this way and booyah, it's really hard to communicate and coordinate with your teammates. Along with that, the ranking system is pretty messy and you can have games with players who have totally different levels of skills and awareness. Despite that, I still love playing Freelance and I find it really fun to meet other players. But it does play differently than a team environment. So in this video, I will give tips for people who play freelance as someone who mostly plays it, but these tips are pretty useful if you want more successful games regardless of how you play the mode. With that being said, let's get into it. Now something you'll need for freelance is solid fundamentals. Of course, these are skills that'll get better with time, but there's a few things that are important to know regardless of your skill level. One is boss priorities. All the salmonids are more or less threatening depending on how they affect players. I made a whole video about this, but to make it simple, here's a tier list. Now some of these spots could be debated and it's very generalized, but basically, high priority bosses threaten the whole team with their damage and or how they affect mobility. They're very dangerous, especially in freelance where things can snowball quickly, and they should be taken care of as soon as possible even if it requires you to go to the shore. Mid priority bosses are those that are fairly threatening but can be left on the map until the higher priority ones are taken care of, and low priority are usually the ones you can somewhat ignore and lure very easily. Priorities can change though depending on the map and its tide. For example, Steel Eel is medium priority on normal tides, but on high tides it becomes one of the most dangerous bosses because it takes up so much space. So this list is a good thing to keep in mind for most situations, but it can change depending on what's happening. When it comes to luring, I still recommend you do it with easy bosses, but beware of overluring since things can get dangerous very quickly. And also, don't expect others to do it. Because yeah, most people don't lure even an executive VP because they're not in the Splatoon community and don't know the optimal overfishing strats. It will happen and that's just a part of playing freelance. So try to not get too frustrated and don't spam this way at the basket, just help bring the eggs closer and try to work with your crew. Another important thing is weapons and knowing their strengths and weaknesses. Thankfully, most weapons are pretty versatile, but it's always good to know what they're good and bad at to play more efficiently. For example, blasters are fantastic at killing stingers while rollers really struggle against them. Or certain weapons demand different positioning, like backlines who prefer to stay behind their team and in safer areas due to their low mobility. By the way, it's totally okay to not know every weapon, just knowing the basics of every class is fine and more specific things will be learned through experience. But I do recommend looking at whatever rotation you're gonna play and thinking about what each weapon should do and what their overall roles will be. While weapon roles are important and a good thing to default to when you play, you still need to be flexible and be able to ask yourself what the game needs at that moment. Maybe you're on an aggressive weapon that wants to kill, but you'll have to play support the whole wave because your teammates aren't painting the map or putting eggs in the basket. You will sometimes have to defy your weapon's role in order to win. As I just mentioned, paint control is also really important. It seems small, but it's what helps you with mobility and survival because you'll get wiped very fast if no one can move around because the map is covered in salmonid ink. Knowing the basics and fundamentals of the mode is extremely important when you can't communicate. They're what will help you lose less games and win more consistently. They'll also help you spot mistakes your teammates may be making and you'll be able to fill in and help to avoid a loss. Speaking of mistakes, let's talk about a few common mistakes so you can spot them in your own gameplay or in your teammates. One that I still see all the time is ignoring lesser salmonids. They may not drop eggs, but they can overwhelm you very fast. They take up a lot of space as well as spread salmonid ink everywhere and damage the team. Be sure to always spot lesser salmonids when you can because they can be very dangerous if ignored. Another mistake is tunnel visioning. Some people focus too much on killing bosses and end up forgetting about the quota, their teammates, and everything else. It can be easy to fall into that habit, so try to always be aware of how close to the quota you are, how your teammates are doing, and overall what's going on on the map. It may seem like a lot of things to keep track of and everyone tunnel vision sometimes, but you need to be aware to not get overwhelmed or surprised by anything. If you see your teammates doing this, then try to be more supportive by bringing eggs to the basket and making sure your team stays alive. Some people also hold off on their 
are specials and forget to use them until it's too late. You can't do much about how your teammates use their specials, but if you find yourself forgetting to use yours, I found that reminding myself at the start of every wave of what special I have is really helpful to actually remember I have one and use it when needed. Most other big mistakes, like ignoring high-priority bosses or not painting the map, come from not having solid fundamentals. I mean, I still see people ignoring fly fish and big shots all the time. These are really common mistakes that you'll see pretty often. It's good to know them, to spot them in games, and hopefully be able to help out to avoid silly losses. Freelance and Salmon Run in general takes a lot of adaptability and teamwork. You have to be able to work with your team and be flexible if you want to win, even if it's annoying sometimes. I'm sure many others have experienced this, but I've had so many teams where no one dealt with shore bosses and yeah, that sucks, but that's the nature of playing with completely random people. You never know what you'll get. But honestly, I still really like playing with randoms. Some of my best teams have been in Freelance and it's always really enjoyable to play with different people people even if there's a couple bad teammates here and there. It can be pretty tough though since it's harder to ensure your teammates have the required skill for certain hazard levels because of the ranking system. And that's why you should keep in mind the things I shared in this video. Anyways, let me know in the comments if you like to play freelance, don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye bye